Some would have you believe the earliest Christians were proto-communists. It's an idea that has had consistent popularity since the days of Marx almost 200 years ago. Was Christ a communist? Welcome back to the history of the papacy in 10 minutes or less, at least no more than 15 minutes. And I want to thank the person who suggested this topic. Unfortunately, I can't find the email that has your name. If you watch this episode or listen to it, please let me know who you are so that I can give you the proper credit that is due to you. The real thrust of this episode is around one singular person named Karl Kotsky, who's referred to as an orthodox communist. Uh, Let's just quickly talk about his biography and background. Um, Kotsky was born in Prague, but moved to Vienna when he was very young. He attended the University of Vienna and majored in economics and history. Interestingly enough, especially for a lot of the people who listen to the history of the papacy and who are watching these videos, Kotsky would have rubbed shoulders with the founders of the Austrian school of economics, especially like the first generation thinkers like bum 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 work it's a hard name to say but there's a bunch of people who are kind of like the intellectual fathers of people who you may have heard of like ludwig von mises they would have been contemporaries or even a little bit older than kotsky but anyways uh, kotsky didn't fall, fall in with these fellows he became really involved with friedrich engels and karl marx like them, the the Karl Marx and Engels themselves, he commented on their works and developed his own ideology and was involved in socialist politics and leftist organizations all throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. He founded, Kotsky that is, found the influential newspaper magazine Die Neue Zeit, which um, he stayed involved with as the owner and as the editor for a long, long time. Kotsky also wrote numerous, numerous books on tons of different topics. And the main book that we're going to really focus in today is a book that he called On Foundations of Christianity, or The Foundations of Christianity, which was published in German in 1908 and then translated into English in 1925. Now, the rest of the story of... Kotsky's life's pretty short after this. He kind of bopped around Germany and Austria and was really involved in socialist politics all throughout Europe. He kind of had a lot of cred because he was really a direct intellectual child of Engels and Marx. He collated their works. He commented on on their works. He directly published a lot of their works. So he had a lot of credibility that he had built up through that. Some of the things that he did that weren't so awesome amongst leftists and socialist circles is that he wasn't necessarily against Austro-Hungary's involvement in World War I, and he was against the Bolshevik Revolution, as were many European socialist intellectuals at that time. He had a lot of problems with Trotsky and with Lenin and definitely with Stalin and some of the other people who came down the pipe in Russia. And he had a kind of a problem with Russia in general of just the way they instituted socialism and Marxism. After that time, he kind of, with these scrapes that he got into in socialist circles, he got pushed to the margins. And um, even though he still wrote plenty about plenty of different subjects of all things socialism, finally in 1938, Kotsky fled Austria, then went to Czechoslovakia, and then things got too hot in Czechoslovakia with the um, Anschluss, or when the German Nazis' occupation of Czechoslovakia. So he was able to flee to the Netherlands after that, but he died in that same year of 1938 in the Netherlands, really before the whole World War II thing got really started. He was fairly old by that time anyways, uh, and well into his 80s. So really, 
Trotsky was directly connected to the intellectual fountainheads of Marxism, being Marx and Engels, but he developed his own school of Marxist thought inside of mainstream Marxism. He definitely earned his title as Pope of Marxism and his bona fides in the orthodox Marxist sphere. So what does Karl Kotsky have to say about early Christianity in his Foundations of Christianity. Karl Kotsky's view on Christianity is very verbose, excessively so, but in the end it's a rather stock view of Christianity from a German and socialist and German socialist perspective. Keep in mind, the German perspective on the on biblical criticism just started taking root in the mid to ninth, mid 19th century into the 20th century. You have the first quest for the historical Jesus led by Germans. You have the invention of the critical approach to the biblical exegesis being developed in Germany by these same people who are kind of in Kotsky's, if not socialist sphere, definitely in the academic spheres that he was running in. All of these views on the historical Jesus and biblical exegesis are highly problematical. They ignore so much of the existing history and context. They take a decidedly Protestant view and outlook on history and the Bible. Even if it's not necessarily strictly from a religious Protestant view, it's the same exegetical techniques that the Protestants were using. And then they completely ignore other traditions, particularly the Catholic Orthodox traditional view of the Bible and church history. So then at the these uh, Bauer and other people in this German uh, first quest for the historical Jesus and biblical criticism, they spread a very thin veneer of air quotes, which you might call science on the whole thing. And then here we go. These ideas gained a great deal of traction, and they really seeped into the academic view of Christianity in many ways still dominate to this day. Kotsky's Foundations of Christianity is really long, and you can find copies of it ch cheap or expensive, depending on what you want, or even free at different sources especially online, Marxist.org has it completely free as long, along with all of his other work. Kotsky's other works that are in the public domain are all free. You can also get Kotsky's work such as Foundations of Christianity from places like on Amazon Kindle that have other uh, interpretations on there from other authors, and they can be quite expensive. But let's unpack this book just a little bit. And we're going to jump in and out of a few specific places through the book. There's some things that he did do well. It's a very interesting organization, and I appreciate the way he organized the book. He hits all of the points that should be hit. The early Jews, Greco-Romans, the early Christians, the early church. And he goes into solid detail. Now, but that being said, there are some things that he did not do, do so well. Most of the history is fairly boilerplate from a 19th century German perspective. There's nothing innovative. Really, the only thing that's innovative is that every single event is viewed through class, economics, and the, specifically the Marxist view on history. And it's really... You, I come to think of that idea of when you have a hammer, everything turns into nails. And that's really how Kotsky views Christianity. Some of the bones that I have to pick with the book are, it's a anachronistic concept that he applies to ancient times. And this really seems to be a common occurrence. Modern historians and laymen want to put a modern labels and modern thoughts onto the ancient church, such as Jesus was a communist because he led a group that rebelled against the power authority. The early church was communist because they met in house churches. The early church was communist because monasticism kind of looked communist. 
The bishops, they took the power away from the common people who were leading this renegade and they tied it into the Greco-Roman power structure, you know, that sort of thing. The big thing is the church has traditionally been against communist ideas of or communist economics, along with capitalists. They've always, the, the church since, really since day one, has embraced kind of an economic ideal that's not capitalist and it's not communist. Uh, we might do some episodes on what the church has viewed on economics, but if you delve in, they really do don't subscribe to any of those, especially these ideas that developed in the 18th and 19th century. I have other points to make, but I I think I'll leave it with one last point. Kowski makes a point that many scholars have made. The early church cut out views that they disagreed with when forming their biblical canon, i.e. the New Testament. And to me, this is kind of mind-boggling. First off, Of course they did. Why would people promulgate books and include books into what they, into their canon or the things, the ideas that they want to put forth into their sacred texts that disagree with what they believe in? Why would you do that? The early church leaders answer the claims of their critics and their opponents in the common writing style of the day, including the Apologia. That's how they answered the their critics. They, um, many times they've found, and there's been writing about bishops who had copies of Gnostic Gospels in their in their own libraries. Irenaeus of Lyon wrote an, an entire book against heresies, against what he was found distasteful, you might say, in alternate Christianities like Gnosticism, but was were they going to put a book uh, full of things that they thought were completely dead wrong next to the books that they thought were absolutely correct? No, that, I mean, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. In the end, though, I think that Kautsky is a very interesting character. He wrote an unbelievable volume of works, yet he's not really widely known today. He seems to have fallen on the wrong side of too many issues among socialist circles, and then he kind of faded away, which I think that's kind of, um, I don't know, sad. You see that in a lot of different movements, um, in the Protestant movement. Some of the people like um, Melanchthon, they're not household names compared to Calvin and Martin Luther and other people like that. And it's just because the you know history just kind of got swamped over them, even though they were highly, highly influential in their day. Despite all of this, Karl Kautsky's ideas set many of the fundamental ideas that socialists uh, view today. And there's a lot of different, really interesting videos that you can watch on YouTube about modern socialists who will talk about Kautsky. And I, I encourage you to learn more about this, whether you fall kind of on the political left or the political right. I find that all of this really fascinating. So really, in the end, if you're into socialism, you'll probably like the foundations of Christianity. If you aren't so much into socialism, you might not dig the foundations of Christianity so much, but I think it it is worth a look, even maybe not reading the whole thing, but reading a couple of the chapters in there because they are really quite fascinating. Now that's it for the this little piece of papal and church history in 10 minutes. Thank you to all our patrons on patreon.com forward slash history of the papacy. Join us there to support the show. Make sure you like, click, and subscribe and ring the bell to get more videos like this. And I will see you next time. Mm-hmm.